that will really enrich all the participants who are attending for this program. Before basically leaving this uh, to the people, I wish to present a brief profile of our institution. B.V. Raju Institute of Technology, Narsipur, was established in the year 1997 by the great Dr. B.V. Rajgaru, who is a Padma Bhushan and Padma Sri awardee, a doyen in the cement industry, and a great philanthropist who really established this institution imbibed with the ethical values. And those ethical values are carried by our the present chairman, Sri K.V. Vishnu Rajgaru, and the strong foundation is laid for the institution on these ethical values. The institution has been really established in a, a, in a great campus like, uh, which, which is really a, a sprawling campus, which is uh, created in a serene and invigorating environment, which is perfect for an idea, ideal for conducive learning. We offer nine undergraduate programs and eight postgraduate programs in various disciplines of engineering. And all the eligible programs are accredited by the National Board of Accreditation. And the institute is a, a NAC accredited institution and an autonomous institution. And from this academic year, we wish to start three UC programs in the emerging areas of AI and ML, data science, and computer science and business systems. The, the main strength of the institution lies in its faculty members, crossing 320 plus faculty, nurturing the students for their holistic development. The main, our management believes in the holistic development of the students. And towards that, Special laboratories have been established in all the lab in all the departments to cater to basically the creative thinking and design thinking. And we have established interdisciplinary labs on campus, such as assistive technologies lab, mainly to promote culture of interdisciplinary research and basically the research mainly for the societal needs and an environment that is created to, for a conducive learning of both staff and the students is created by the management and the management vision is to nurture these uh, young graduates who can really keep high the flag of B.V. Raju Institute of Technology and support very high across the globe. And I thank all the participants for participating in this program. And I really once again thank Dr. S. Selvakumar Garu for accepting our invitation. And I am sure that the, all the participants will enjoy the lectures because the, the people who have been chosen as resource persons are not only from academia, from industry, from the research laboratories. It's a blend of people, experts, from all the domains, uh, really concentrating towards the internet of things. I'm sure that you will enrich yourself uh, and leave this program after six days uh, with a valuable information, which can, you can share it to your colleagues and the students. Uh, I wish you all the best, all the best, all the best. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir, for gracing the occasion. It's my pleasure to invite our Honorable Chairman, Sri K.V. Vishnu Rajagaru, to deliver the inaugural address and grace the occasion. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. And uh, good morning to all the participants and uh, specifically to the Chief Guest, Dr. Selva Kumar, and uh, our Principal, Dr. Lakshmi Prasad, also Dr. Pichai, uh, Dr. Madhubabu, uh, Dr. Poonachand in the entire computer science department of BVRIT in Asapur for organizing this uh, AACT sponsored one week online STTP. And a very apt uh, subject, the Internet of Things based green energy systems. 
and uh, i would like to personally uh, thank dr selvakumar for having accepted to be the chief guest in fact uh, i would like to share with dr selvakumar i am also a product of nit trichy uh, i think you did your mtech uh, in 1987 you passed out uh, i passed out in 1985 i did my btech there i am assuming that you stayed in the coral hostel uh, that's where the mtech students used to stay so very happy that uh, from rc trichy Uh, one of our people have now become the director of uh, prestigious triple it una hp thank you sir for uh, gracing this occasion also today's topic even though i am not a computer science uh, graduate i am a chemical engineer but i keep following what is happening uh, i'll just take a minute before i end uh, dear participants many of you are uh, participating from throughout the country and this is a very hot subject in fact about 10 days back i attended a, a webinar uh, organized by Thai Hyderabad, that is the Indus Entrepreneurs Hyderabad, and the chief speaker was Dr. Jeffrey Wong, the chief innovation officer of Ernst and Young. And from Silicon Valley, he was saying the effect of this pandemic on how technology is going to change. And he said, irrespective of the branch or discipline we are in, our entire life will change in the future, and we have to fit into one of these five categories. And he says these five areas. the first thing he talked about is iot slash 5g and he says that the internet of things also will change now with the advent of 5g technology which is now being rolled all over the world then he's talking about cloud he's talking about cyber uh, security and blockchain and artificial intelligence and when he was talking about iot the way things devices talk to each other he says he was very excited about the new 5g technology which will make things uh, very real time especially in the field of healthcare Uh, traffic control systems uh, smart cities etc so it's a very apt subject and i'm very happy that our uh, bbrt narsapur has chosen this particular topic for this sttp and um, personally i uh, in fact want to share a small incident with all of you last year i had uh, visited new york and then when i was going around new york i was i went to the empire state building and what i was told there that this building which is 90 years old which was once upon a time the tallest building in the world a uh, 90 year old building and it has become a lead gold certified building and the person who took me around talked about iot and how how many sensors they have installed and how energy efficient that building is so it's a misconception that only the brand new buildings are being constructed as per the lead standards even a 90 year old building has been re retrofitted and very interesting information what i was told i don't know i'm sure many of you know this is that the smartest uh, and the most green building in the world is located in amsterdam a building called the edge which is the european headquarters for deloitte consulting so i just read a little bit about it and i was really surprised to see that uh, how they are using iot there how every employee who works in that 5 5 lakh square feet building uh, has a mobile app and right from car parking to the temperature of their uh, existing room to the coffee machine everything has been connected through iot and as a result uh, including they have done things like thermal energy they have actually dug a 190 meter well they use thermal energy they use solar energy and things like that and with thousands of sensors and i was surprised to see that it is a energy positive building in fact they are generating more energy than even consuming the energy so i think there are a lot of these exciting technologies available and i'm very happy that bvrit narsapur has chosen this topic i hope all the participants uh, really uh, get benefited out of this and i just saw the panel of speakers all very eminent speakers like dr selva kumar and others who are going to talk in the morning session and the next few days so i congratulate bvrit computer science department for organizing such a wonderful uh, sttp and uh, thank you all and uh, wish you all the very best and i hope all of you are staying safe during this pandemic thank you and i wish the conference all the very best thank you thank you sir for blessings and gracing the occasion now i am glad to introduce our today's chief guest professor s selva kumar director at indian institute of information technology una himachal pradesh previously he was associated as dean of indian institute of technology 
Indian Information Technology, Sri Rangam Trichirapalli, functioning in the NIT campus, Trichirapalli. He has a profound academic profile and versatile research experiences in the field of wireless sensor network and network security. He has obtained his degree in ECE with distinction in 1983 from Madurai Kamaraja University, Madurai, and postgraduate degree in computer science and engineering in 1987 from Regional Engineering College. He was awarded PhD degree by the IIT Madras, Chennai in 1999. He has 33 years of teaching experience and 23 years of research experience. His research interest includes group communication in high-speed networks, routing, multimedia communication, scheduling for QoS guarantee, mobile networks, network security, wireless sensor networks, and network computing. He has completed three projects worth of rupees 121 lakhs on various projects for the collaborative director, basic research in smart and secure environment, CDBR SSE, in abbreviated as sponsored by National Technical Research Organization, NTRO, New Delhi. His, his contribution to the CDBR SSE projects are unified network threat management solutions, including RPB boost, a DDoS attack deduction using ensemble of classifiers. DEPA, another project, a deep packet analysis from threshold based DNS monitoring tool, H2M2 a hybrid hidden Marco model to detect host intrusions and list SAP, a link level signature based secure autonomous protocol for prevention of traffic analysis attacks. He has also contributed the technical solution such as data crypt to secure the data in flash memories and Christ, a secure wild travel technique. These are all few projects I'm highlighting about his versatility. He has conducted three workshops and three seminars related to network security in association with McPhee, Bangalore to have academia industry interaction. During his tenure as convener, as a part of computer group, support group, he has established 10 GPPS high-speed campus network connectivity. He has the credit of publishing 69 research papers, including 31 international and national journals and 38 in international and national conferences. Five PhD degrees have been awarded under his guidance. He is currently guiding four doctoral research scholars and one MS by research scholar. He has visited University of Alcala, Madrid, Spain, Lowa State University, Amherst, USA, City University of New York, USA, Queensland University of Technology, Brisbane, Australia, University of Vienna, Austria, and Singapore, Canada, and Switzerland in the context of academic and research. He is also a reviewed international journal on ad hoc networks, elsewhere publications, UK. Sir, we are all keen to hear your intellectual insights. I would like to request our chief guest to deliver the inaugural note. It's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to all. Thank you, one and all. I request our chief guest to start the inaugural note, our inaugural address. Thank you. Anakam, good morning. Respected Chairman Sir, uh, I am glad to know that you are also one of the alumnus of uh, um, REC, SOL REC, and now the United Thirsarapalli. Glad to meet you. I Thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity to be part of this uh, ASAT sponsored one week online uh, HTTP on Internet of Things based green energy systems. I thank uh, Dr. Lakshmi Prasad, the, the uh, principal. I thank uh, Dr. Madhubabu, the HOD of uh, CAC department. Also, I thank the coordinator, uh, Dr. Pichai, for uh, giving me an opportunity to interact with. Uh, uh, 200 and, and odd participants across uh, all over India. Thanks to Corona, uh, it is possible uh, from uh, every nook and corner of uh, India, we are able to network together. It's the power of network. Uh, see, in 1987, when I read that such, uh, 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 such applications are possible through the first uh, 
कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क स्टैंड बॉम बोर्ड का दैट वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग रिमोट एजुकेशन एसेट्रा आई वाज वांडरिंग हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू हैपन बट नाउ आफ्टर थ्री डिकेट्स इट हैज बिकम अ रियलिटी एंड इट इज इट हैज बिकम द ऑर्डर ऑफ द डे नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूशंस इंक्लूडिंग आवर्स वी हैव स्टार्टेड द टीचिंग ऑनलाइन कोर्सेज एंड ऑल द करिकुलम सब्जेक्ट्स we have started offering it as a online platform because we don't know uh, when the institute uh, will be uh, uh, permitted to reopen by the government of india maybe till then we have to make use of the technology through the online platform though there are uh, slightly still uh, 20 to 30% of the uh, population is not covered we are getting uh, feedback from the students by and by and large uh, almost all urban and uh, cities have been linked through powerful uh, uh, communication infrastructure in our country and maybe in the years to come definitely uh, 5g the 5g technology will also be deployed and it will also be in place so with the uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity the bv raju institute of technology uh, hyderabad i uh, i congratulate uh, the uh, organizers for taking the uh, um, the uh, wonderful uh, topic uh, which is the current uh, thrust in the uh, research internet of things iot based green energy systems and uh, i i congratulate all the participants for their uh, interest uh, to listen to uh, this uh, course the course i just uh, had a i browsed through the schedule it, uh, it is having 11 technical sessions by four academicians and four uh, industrialists on varied uh, topics see the topic topics chosen are very much uh, relevant so i congratulate the uh, organizer and the department for uh, having chosen uh, uh, the excellent uh, topics and the uh, Uh, experts so uh, i will be just giving a gl uh, glance or a glimpse of uh, what is iot and uh, how it is going to impact our uh, life in the near future uh, so the uh, researchers have a very good opportunity to contribute towards this uh, uh, technical uh, uh, issues now let us look at uh, the internet of things is the slide visible for everyone no sir uh, it's not it open i guess one minute one minute yes sir it's visible it's visible sir. now yes sir yes sir visible sir yeah so now let us uh, uh, look at uh, internet of things based uh, green energy systems so this is the uh, i will be covering uh, what the definition of uh, smart intelligent world rise in uh, green energy green iot system challenges in green iot system future research directions summary and references i will not be taking much time so uh, so that you can have an interaction with the experts so when we look at uh, the uh, definition of uh, internet of things uh, so basically uh, data gets uh, generated data or information it gets generated from uh, various uh, devices 24 hours daily that means 24 cross 7 data is getting generated and uh, it is going to be consumed by somebody or some 
devices or some applications and it is going to be meaningful for them so data could be getting generated by humans by machines devices equipments instruments gadgets even nature generates its own uh, huge volume of data so therefore see data when it is getting generated by one device or the other it may not be meaningful if it is uh, uh, within that system alone if it is shared then it becomes meaningful so it has to be shared through data transfer so we need to have a very good data transfer mechanism also so in order to define internet of things earlier networking was defined as uh, interconnection of uh, autonomous devices capable of exchanging information now the same uh, definition is slightly uh, extended to include system of inter related computing devices it could be mechanical and digital machines objects animals or people provided with unique identifiers earlier only uh, machines were involved now all the animate and inanimate things are also to be interconnected because there is a need and uh, transfer so we need to generate uh, whatever data that has been generated has to be transferred over a network maybe without requiring human to human or human to computer interaction so basically this data or information getting generated by generators or producers of the data which are to be uh, consumed or consumers to be consumed by the consumers now if you look at what is uh, green energy system basically we need to come out with the systems which has uh, less carbon dioxide emission now in the whole world there is a a uh, trust on minimizing the emission of uh, carbon dioxide so therefore we may think of uh, alternative having alternative energy to conventional energy resources some of the unconventional or non conventional energy resources renewable energy resources could be sunlight wind rain tides waves etc and uh, using this we need to generate energy maybe when we generate uh, energy there is a requirement from uh, converting it from one energy form to the other energy form and uh, so that many applications can be driven say for example uh, we need to provide uh, efficient energy in electricity uh, generation basically uh, heating cooling of air and water transportation uh, etc now if we uh, we know that uh, the whole world is moving uh, uh, towards uh, smarter and smarter world so almost uh, we are living in the uh, intelligent world now still if in the coming years another uh, one or two decades we will be definitely moving towards a smart intelligent world consisting of smart agriculture smart kitchen smart healthcare smart transport smart clock smart message recorder smart monitoring smart appliances smart payment smart buildings smart cities and in all applications 
you may simply add the word small and therefore for the coming uh, technocrats there are a lot of uh, challenging issues for them to contribute technical solutions they can contribute in any of these areas now let us look at uh, some uh, video clippings uh, thanks to the uh, availability of internet uh, which has been uh, all this video have been collected from uh, internet only let's look at a uh, few uh, videos that will give an idea where the technology is uh, heading in the near future traditional agriculture has always used data but today's data challenges are increasingly more complex data must be harnessed in new ways and provide better insights over the next generation our global population will continue to grow by 2050 there will be 9 billion people on the earth and it's expected we will need to produce 70 percent more food using less land and fewer scarce resources to meet this challenge the agricultural industry must evolve Microsoft and EY are empowering a digital transformation in agriculture by connecting data to the cloud, driving innovation and value. What if you could predict the best crops to grow using the power of data? Recognize crop disease or pests faster. Connect with vendors seamlessly. Doing all this knowing you control your own data. With data captured from each field and connected to predictive analysis, farmers have an unprecedented view of their crops. Edge computing will lower the cost of field oversight and accelerate the response to crop threats. Artificial intelligence will expose inefficiencies and unlock new insights to enhance production. Mixed reality will make a remote mechanic an expert and give agronomists the complete view of a farm. Robotics will add a new dimension to how and where crops can be produced. Microsoft and EY have the experience, trust and scale to enable innovation throughout the global food value chain. Working together, we can rise to the challenge of feeding the world. This is data-driven agriculture. This is agriculture on Azure. Because when the world of farming harvests data, the world works better. Now let us look at uh, a video for Smart Kitchen. Welcome to the future of cooking. This oven has responsive glass, responding to the user's presence. It's connected and gives feedback and guidance on how to use it. Depending which zone goes transparent indicates to the user where to place that dish. When not using it, it seamlessly blends into your kitchen. Not only silent, but it's a great storage place. Serve and Preserve has a pull-out pantry, giving you full visibility and easy access to your produce. This is an integrated knife and chopping board cleaner. It works with steam.
After five seconds, I'm ready to chop my next ingredient. Visual Garden provides inspiration. By pulling out the crisper, it gives you full view on your fresh produce. The integrated vitamin C light keeps your produce fresh. FlexiBurner is the first gas hob where the flame adapts to the size of your pan. This is FlexiChill, the first wine dispenser and wine chiller for the home. This is for wine connoisseurs who appreciate a great glass of wine in the evening without having to empty your whole bottle. Oh my god! Roger! Hello! That's all about uh, Smart Kitchen. Now let's look at one more uh, video, Smart uh, Healthcare. As technology advances, so does our quality of life. This is true especially in healthcare where connected medical devices are becoming more nimble, accurate, and readily available. On Semiconductor Solutions are at the core of these devices and are helping to change lives. Chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease are the leading cause of disability and death worldwide because many of these diseases are incurable, prevention and monitoring are key, and connected medical devices are helping people to reduce their risks. For many people living with diabetes, glucose monitoring is a part of everyday life. In the past, this meant pricking fingers, keeping stock of test strips, writing the results down and tracking patterns. With the advent of smart glucose meters, this task becomes markedly less intrusive and the results are more accurate. Utilizing Bluetooth Low Energy technology, the RSL10 Bluetooth 5 radio family enables the glucometer to read glucose levels and wirelessly sends the data to an app on a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Data is stored in the app or in a secure cloud. Results are then easy to review and share with healthcare providers and caregivers. Connected glucometers are convenient and easy to use. This makes them more likely to be used and improve health outcomes. Tracking heart rate is also a widely used strategy for preventing health issues. Through smartwatches, it is easy to track heart rate at every minute of the day, from a morning run to middle of the night sleep cycles. Bluetooth low energy connectivity provided by the RSL10 sends that data to a device for recording and monitoring. People with heart disease can use this information to make sure they are maintaining a healthy heart rate while exercising. Because a reliable, long battery life is critical to these smart healthcare devices, the RSL10 Bluetooth 5 radio provides the industry's lowest power consumption to Bluetooth low energy applications. To learn more about On Semiconductor's connectivity solutions and how to implement them into devices, visit onsemi.com slash IoT.
newest concept for the future of autonomous driving. Cedric, as in self-driving car, get it? Is fully autonomous, meaning it has no steering wheel or pedals, and it can be summoned at the push of a button for ride-hailing trips, a la Uber and Lyft. VW claims that Cedric is the first vehicle to be designed for fully autonomous driving from scratch. Of course, it's important to note that Cedric is just a concept, meaning it does not exist anywhere but in the imaginations of a few VW engineers and designers. Which may explain why Cedric looks so angry. VW says it's using Cedric to highlight the importance of self-driving vehicles to the future of the company. The accompanying press materials are an alphabet soup of buzzwords like individual mobility, sustainability, and cross-brand ideas platform. But it's hard to pay attention to that when this thing looks so much like a pissed-off toaster. Next is an advanced smart transportation system based on swarms of modular self-driving vehicles, designed in Italy. Each module can join and detach with other modules on standard city roads. When joined, they create an open, bus-like area among modules, allowing passengers to stand and walk from one module to another. The modules can drive autonomously on regular roads, join themselves and detach even when in motion, and that when joined, the doors between modules fold, creating a walkable open space among modules. These key features are the reason why this project is radically different and not comparable to other projects such as, folding cars, Hiriko and similar, Rinspeed Micromex and any other modular road train system based on new railways, dedicated infrastructures or on the locomotive followers paradigm. The vehicle, which founders call a teapot is the first truck to be designed to never have a human inside. The driverless design makes it possible, the startup says, to run fully on electric power in a way that can compete with diesel semis on the road today. Without windows or a separate cab, the truck looks essentially like an aerodynamic white box with wheels. Since a truck hauling 20 tons of freight needs a lot of energy to move, it has to stop fairly frequently to charge. The teapot can make it 124 miles before it is to plug in again. This is a UK first. This is the first time we've had a vehicle driving driverless in a public environment. Wow, absolutely no hands. Wow, amazing. I'd probably be pressing pedals and, you know, very backseat driver sort of approach. These are really driverless. There is a steering wheel in the vehicle for safety reasons. But this is uh, really autonomous control where the system is thinking for itself. So as it's driving, it has some cameras on the front and it's taking pictures 20 times a second in very high resolution. And it also has a few lasers that are spinning very fast as well. So it's using both pictures and laser light to see what's around it. If it doesn't like any of those things or it thinks it should give way to someone, it will pause, wait for that person or object to move or that cyclist or that dog, wait for it to pass and then move on, getting you from A to B. It has been tested extensively, so safety has been our primary consideration throughout this project. In the UK, approximately 1,700 people, unfortunately, uh, are killed on the roads each year. Over 90% of road accidents are caused in some way by human error. These systems have the opportunity of reducing that risk of human error enormously. Our next step is to develop a, a test fleet of around 40 vehicles to, to mimic a public transport system for the city centre. In the middle of next year we'll be rolling out the, the vehicle as a fleet and asking people to come and use them and, and test the capability to see if it can really enhance the city. Yeah, so that's a glimpse of uh, the world ahead. I'm, I think every one of you uh, might be excited. I'm sure in the, now it looks like it is a video, but uh, in another one or two decades, definitely it may become a reality. And even in our own uh, country, India, and in every state, uh, such transport uh, may become the reality. And if uh, God's grace is uh, with us, maybe I may own one of such cars, or I may travel, I may have the opportunity to travel uh, in, the, in one of such uh, transport uh, mechanisms.
okay now if you look at uh, the technology is uh, deployed in all fields and all walks of uh, life and uh, there is a as a result uh, there is a increased comfort and convenience see even the average lifetime of the human has uh, increased as a result uh, more and more uh, uh, human needs are uh, uh, ahead but resources are very much limited so therefore we may have to have a mechanism of uh, using the resources or enhancing the uh, yield of the resources now green energy so green energy has been on the uh, increase uh, due to urbanization say in urbanization 2.5 billion uh, plus people in cities by 2050 and uh, already we have started uh, experiencing the uh, digital digitization it is expected that 50 billion connected things in the year 2050 moreover industrialization may also need uh, further more and more uh, uh, energy in multiple uh, times as whatever is the current uh, capacity now what are the reasons for uh, green energy rise in green energy see it's becoming more and more uh, electrical demand for electricity driven by uh, sustainability intelligent devices and evolution of uh, key energy consumers so almost all need energy to drive uh, their uh, actions or competitions whatever it is so we need more and more uh, energy and it is uh, more distributed also provide local energy to facilities uh, through their uh, own available networks and micro grids to empower users falling prices of renewable energy definitely maybe even now uh, the prices of renewable energy are coming down but still uh, slightly on the higher side but uh, definitely in the years to come because most of the researchers are uh, looking at how to uh, bring down the uh, prices of energy so definitely it will be more and more affordable in the years to come more connected so iot will connect at least 24 billion devices by uh, 2030 and uh, there is a need for uh, efficiency see as of now it looks like two third of energy efficiency potential are uh, not that uh, so therefore we may have to uh, design our buildings our industry and infrastructure in such a way that we are using uh, we are uh, using efficiently the available uh, resources energy resources data center all look to improve performance because if you look at a data center there will be huge uh, um, systems uh, running and they will be generating huge heat energy so therefore in order to improve the performance so it has to be energy efficient and efficiency is more important and which is environmental footprint also now what is meant by green iot system a system designed with energy efficient procedure and adapted by iot is defined as a green iot system this green iot system reduces the greenhouse effect of uh, existing applications reduces the energy consumption and the carbon dioxide uh, emission provides sustainability and makes the world smart but safe so what are the steps in designing towards uh, green iot system designing first one is the green design so uh, see it should not be uh, like an add on uh, provision it has to be by the design itself from the fundamental design itself it has to be green so we have to identify all components and every component has to be green designing energy efficiency for green iot sound systems computers servers and uh, cooling equipments these are all uh, only a uh, uh, few list and the list is not exhaustive and complete green production so whatever we produce it should uh, conform to the green standards producing electronic components 
computers and other associated subsystems with minimal or no impact on the environment. So basically environment friendly uh, components we may have to produce. And utilization, green utilization, minimizing the power consumption of computers and other information systems as well as using them in an environmentally sound and healthier manner. And disposal, green disposal. See, nowadays, uh, uh, waste disposal is a challenge. Even now in today's uh, Corona uh, era, disposing of the PPE kit, disposing of the uh, medical, uh, whichever uh, the masks and other um, hygiene uh, equipments, etc. So it has become a challenge. Eh? Similarly, nowadays we use a lot of uh, silicon components, computers, chips and so on. And almost all uh, devices have the um, such components. So basically e-waste. So e-waste management and disposal is a challenge. Reusing old computers and recycling unwanted computers and other electronic equipment. So this is a very, very uh, challenge uh, disposal. So that it is uh, green, it remains green always. Now, what are the principles in uh, making a green IoT system uh, a successful one? Sleep scheduling. So basically, here, uh, sleep scheduling means uh, it is the question of uh, uh, usage versus non uh, usage. When it is uh, not in use, uh, the facility must be turned off. Turn off the facilities that are not needed. And uh, data delivery. For every act, uh, for every act, there is a for every act, there is a, a data, uh, the uh, energy consumption. So therefore, if the energy consumption has to be less, then we have to uh, choose the data in such a way that we process only the relevant data. So send data that are only relevant and needed. Routing schemes, minimizing the uh, length of uh, the data path and advanced communication technology, which uses multiple input and multiple output, then solar energy, renewable uh, green power sources, and so on. Now, what are the uh, challenges in uh, green IoT? Transforming the data from IoT into actionable information will require the right people. I don't know how, what is this happening in on my slides. Sir, sorry for the interruption. Uh, there is another uh, in that uh, toolbar, more option will be there, sir. There, disable and uh, participant annotation will be there. With the presenter only, it is available. I request all the participants not to involve this kind of activities. We need to respect our chief guest, please. It's our humble request. Sir, we need to go to more, sir. Within that more button, disable participant annotation and uh, we need to click annotate and clear all. Yes, sir. These two are with the presenter, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, this happens now because participants are uh, more enthusiastic and uh, they want to always interfere with. Uh, these are the online challenges we have. Okay. Uh, okay, now anyway, I will be not, not taking too much of time, uh, one other two, three slides. So we have uh, challenges uh, in uh, transforming data from IoT into actionable information, which requires the right people and the field services, energy and sustainable services and so on. Energy harvesting and low power chipset. See, basically the computation uh, has to be made very, very uh, low power. So accordingly, the instruction set and accordingly the uh, VLSI circuit. So everything matters. We need to design. And then uh, the data which are uh, stored in uh, cloud. So data sensor, from sensor, data gets generated and that gets stored and getting processed, accessed from the cloud and getting processed and again stored in the cloud. So basically, and again, it is getting consumed also. So here is the challenge. 
sensor cloud integration is a challenge In the closing annotated, we can move forward, sir, with the next slide. Closing annotated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So now coming to future research directions, designing IoT for high quality of experience. See, we have just like we just now looked at some of the uh, smart agriculture, smart transport, smart healthcare, and so on, and uh, uh, quality of uh, service. Sir. Uh, modeling energy consumption in green IoT systems, investigating uh, energy efficient uh, green system structure, developing more advanced sensor cloud, replacing massive number of IoTs with unmanned uh, aerial vehicle, leading to low cost and uh, high efficient green systems. So these are some of the uh, research directions and definitely this is not exhaustive. So to conclude my talk, uh, to summarize, so we have looked at uh, introduction to IoT and green energy systems and smart uh, intelligent world that is uh, ahead in another one or two decades of time. Rise in green energy, the steps, green energy, uh, green IoT system design, the steps and principles, challenges in green IoT system, research uh, future directions. See, uh, whatever I have introduced is just a, a glimpse or glance. Uh, it's a overview, it's an aerial overview. Maybe in the days to come, uh, with uh, the resource persons, uh, you'll be in a position to understand uh, every keyword, whatever we have discussed, uh, all the keywords in detail. These are the uh, references, some of the references. And I thank you very much. Uh, I thank you uh, all for the participants for their. Uh, uh, patient listening to me and uh, I am sure most of you would be uh, uh, doing your research yes, or looking for uh, research topics uh, in the year to come. So definitely IOT has a very good uh, research potential and I wish all of you to contribute technically uh, in this uh, field and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I thank our chief guest, Dr. Selva Kumar, for setting the stage for this STTP with the several use cases and recent applications. That was awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your inaugural note. Sir, thank you very much, sir, for your informatic uh, talk, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I am leaving. I wish all now, the participants uh, um, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to invite Dr. Purna Chen to deliver the vote of thanks. Yeah, great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. It's my privilege to propose vote of thanks. We are very privileged to have an interaction with Professor Eselos Selvakumar Garu, who has a real-time experience in the field of networking and IoT. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for our resource person, Professor S. Selvakumar Sir, for sharing wonderful research insights on IoT research avenues and smart intelligent world. Thanking you, sir. I would like to thank our Vision Army Chairman, Sri K.B. Vishnu Garu, and our dynamic Vice Chairman, Sri Ravichandran Rajagopal Garu, for their continuous support and motivation. A special mention to our principal, Dr. K. Lakshmi Prasad Garu, who is the catalyst and stimulated us to do our best and standing as pillars of strength. I would like to thank our dynamic head of the department, Dr. C.H. Madhubabu Garu, who is being a router and providing us paths of success. Last but not least, we should thank our HTTP coordinator, Dr. R. Pichai, for inviting such eminent personalities to this webinar. I should mention a special acknowledgement the, for the contribution of Mr. Marvarman and Abdul Suman for the organizing and uh, for the supporting for the registration process and also acknowledge the contribution of the, uh, the persons, those who are working behind the screen for the successful conduction of this webinar. Really, really, really thank you from our bottom of hearts, sir, uh, for uh, today's your valuable inputs and thought providing uh, thoughts. Okay. Thank you one and all. I wish you all the success in future. Thank you.
Thank you all for joining us in our inaugural function and gracing the occasion. Dear participants, let us have five minutes of break. Subsequently, the day one session is going to start with the regarding feedback link each day during the afternoon session, only one time it will be shared between three o'clock to four o'clock. So 80% of the attendance of your participation is expected as per the ACT norms. Thank you. Let us have a short break for five minutes. Subsequently, let us start the session with the resource person of the day one. Thank you, ma'am. 